Unit 3 Direction and Location Listening Activity Number 1 Task 1 You are going to listen to a conversation about how to make English style tea. As you listen, put the missing words in the blanks. Mr. Wang, would you like some tea? Yes, please. Here you are. Thanks. Oh, it tastes different from Chinese tea. Do you like it? Yes, it's not too bad. How do you make English style tea? It's easy. Put some water in a kettle and boil the water. Then you should warm the pot. Warm the pot? How do you do this? Just by putting a little hot water into the teapot and swilling it round. You know, to make the very best tea, the water must be as hot as possible. Uh-huh. So what do you do then? So then, you put some tea into the teapot, about two to three teaspoons, and then you pour the boiling water over the tea. And then is it ready to drink? No. You should let the tea stand for a few minutes to let it brew properly. It has to be quite strong. And then pour a little milk into a cup. Some milk? Yes, if you like tea with milk, which most English people do, pour the tea into the cup and it's ready to drink. Or if you want to add some sugar to the tea, maybe one or two teaspoons. That's it? Yes, that's it. I may give it a go next time then. Listen activity number two. Task one. Listen to a conversation between Mary and her brother, Jack. As you listen, complete the instructions about how to use the water heater. Jack is staying with his sister, Mary, in England. He wants to have a shower, but he doesn't know how to use it. So he phones Mary. Five six three seven two one EBC Company. Good morning. Can I speak to Mary? It's her brother here. Oh hi, Jack. This is Mary. When did you come? I thought you were coming this afternoon. Yes. Well, I planned to, but my friend bought a ticket for this morning instead. So. I see. Well, I'm sorry. I'm very busy now, so I can't really leave. Well, you can have a rest and take a shower. That's just it. I'm going to ha take a shower, but I don't know how to use the hot water tank. Oh, OK. Well, don't plug in the electricity, the hot water tank, until you're absolutely sure you've filled it with water. Don't plug in the hot water tank? Sorry. Don't plug it into the mains. Oh. Yep. I see. Before it's full of water, oh, I'm with you. Um, because at the moment, uh, it's drained off for the winter, you see. I get you, yeah. Now the tank, it's got two taps underneath it. Yes. One's red, one's black. Right. You are all right? Uh-huh. Now here, you've got to, you've got to close the red one first. Close the red first, yes. That's the drainage tap. Yeah. Then you've got to open the black one. Open the black one? Which is the supply tap. Yes, um, well, yes. Open the black one, right. And it'll take about five minutes, probably, to fill up. Mm-hmm. And then you can plug it into the mains. Good. And then I get... And about half an hour later, you should have some hot water with any luck. About half an hour? Mm. Fine. So I've got electricity and water? Yes. Great. Well, oh, sounds like... You should be all right. OK, thanks. See you soon. Listening activity number three. Task one. Look out the following pictures and listen carefully to the news. As you listen, pick out the wanted man according to the description. Police are searching for a man who is wanted for questioning about a string of burglaries in the London area. In the incidents, a man tied a woman in her own house in the early hours of the morning and escaped with goods valued at around £5,000. They included items of jewellery, a stereo, a video recorder and a colour TV set. The woman managed to free herself unhurt after the man fled. She described the man as follows. 
He is about 30 years old and of medium build. He has a long angular face and a pointed nose. He has a small moustache and a short black hair. His eyes are small and he wears glasses. He also has a faint scar on his left cheek. I'll repeat that description. A man of medium build with a long angular face, a pointed nose and small eyes. He has a small moustache, short black hair and he was wearing glasses. He has a faint scar on his left cheek. As I said, please contact your nearest police station if you think you can offer any assistance. Listening activity number four. Task one. Look at the following pictures and listen carefully to the news. As you listen, pick out the wanted man according to the description. Last night, a man broke into a factory in the Leeds area and got away with cash of around £6,000. He's about 40 years old and very short, about 155 centimetres. He's almost completely bald and has got a little hair at the sides above each ear. But he does have a big brown beard. He was later seen driving away from the scene in an old blue escort car. Police warn that this man could be armed and therefore dangerous. If anyone has any information as to his whereabouts, please contact your nearest police station. I'll repeat that description. A man about 40 years old, 155 centimetres tall, almost bald, with a little hair above each ear. He has a big brown beard. If anyone sees him, please contact your nearest police station. Listening activity number five. Task one. Listen to a conversation between Jim and Kathy. As you listen, pick out Kathy's sister according to the description. Hello, 2345786. Hello, could I speak to Jim Schaefer, please? Speaking. Oh, hi, Jim. This is Kathy. I'm sorry to bother you so late. I just want to ask you a little favour. Oh, sure. I'd like to help out. Just anything you want. Look, my sister Diana is coming to visit our campus. We're supposed to meet at the front of the main building at 9am tomorrow. Yes? Unfortunately, I forgot that I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow morning, so I can't go and meet her. Could you possibly meet her for me? Yes, I could do. But I've never seen your sister before. Well, she's sort of average height and quite slim. She's 21 years old, with short curly hair, and she has an attractive average face and looks pretty cheerful. It's easy to recognise her. She usually wears a jumper and trousers with flat shoes. OK, let me write that down. Average height and slim, about 21 years old, with short curly hair and an attractive face. She'll probably be wearing a jumper and trousers, is that right? Yes. OK, I think I should be able to recognise her. Thank you very much. Listening activity number six. Task one. Listen to a conversation between a customer and a policeman. As you listen, pick out the man the lady describes. Officer, officer. Yes, ma'am. Somebody just took my purse, my money, my credit cards, and everything's gone. All right, just calm down a minute. OK, now what did the person look like? He was kind of tall and thin. About how tall? Around 170, something like that. Around 170. And how old was he? I'm not sure. Oh, he was fairly young. Uh, in his teens, I think. 17 or 18. And what colour was his hair? Blonde. And it was long and frizzy. Eyes? I don't know. It all happened so fast. Yes, of course. What was he wearing? He was wearing old jeans and a t-shirt and boots. Oh, yes, he was wearing glasses. Fine. And now tell me about your purse. What did it look like? Well, it was red 
and it had a shoulder strap. What was it made of? Leather. OK, now I'll need your name and address. Listening activity number seven. Task one. You will hear a dialogue between a policeman and a lady who has lost her daughter. As you listen, work out who is the lady's daughter. Now listen carefully. Clifton Police Station, can I help you? Yes, it's about my daughter Mary. She went to school this morning and she hasn't arrived yet, and it's eleven o'clock. Just a minute. Mrs... Mrs Joe Smith, 34 Bath Road. Thank you. Now, Mr Smith, what exactly is the matter? Well, Mary left home this morning at about nine o'clock. Then her teacher telephoned me about an hour ago and asked if Mary was ill. I said, no, why? And then she said... I see. Now let's have a few details. How old is Mary? She is six. And what does she look like? Well, she is slim and has long dark hair tied in a pigtail with a ribbon in it. Yes, slim, long dark hair tied in a pigtail with a ribbon in it. And what colour is the ribbon? It's pink. Pink. OK, what does she wear? She is wearing a white short-sleeved blouse and a pink and white striped skirt, long stockings and black shoes. Just a minute. Let me write them down. A white short-sleeved blouse and a pink and white striped skirt with long socks and black shoes. Is that right? Yes, exactly. All right, Mrs Smith. We'll help you find out your daughter. We'll give you a call as soon as we get the information about your daughter. Thank you very much. Listening activity number eight. You're going to listen to a conversation. As you listen, tick the right letter according to the direction. Now listen to the conversation. Uh, excuse me, I'm looking for a bank. Is there one around here? A bank? Let's see now. Oh, OK. The road we're in now is the Broadway. So you need to go down this street to the intersection. Turn left and go one block until you come to Beach Road. Turn right onto Beach Road, and then it's on the right side of the street, just past the chemists. You can't miss it. I see. Down to the intersection, turn left, go to the end of the block, and then turn right. That's it. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Listening activity number nine. Look at the diagram below and listen to the directions. As you listen, follow the directions and then write the appropriate number beside the name of the place. Excuse me, could you tell me where the University Library is, please? The University Library? Oh, yes. Well, when you leave the bus station, you should turn right and if you walk a little way down the road, you'll come to a crossroads. Turn right here, and about... Uh, what's the name of the street? Oh, it's First Avenue. So you walk along this street, and about 200 yards further down, there's another crossroads. And this time you turn left into Hill Road. So that's right at the first crossroads, and left at the second. Uh-huh. Then, as you walk up Hill Road, you'll see the post office on your left, and next to it a large supermarket. The library is just across the road from it, on your right. OK. Hill Road, opposite the supermarket. It's a fairly distinctive building, easy to spot, next to a big hotel. That's great. Opposite the supermarket and next to the big hotel. Actually, I could do with finding a good books shop. Are there any nearby? Hmm. There are a couple. One on 2nd Avenue and another on 1st. I think the one on First Avenue is probably the best. How do I get there? Well, instead of turning left up Hill Road at the second crossroads, just carry straight on. You'll see a pub on the corner. Then it's not the next building, but the one after that. 
So it's pretty near the library then? Yeah, the one on 2nd Avenue is nearer actually. But as I said, this one's bigger. Wonderful. Oh, hang on. Before I go to the bookshop, I should get some money first. Is there a Lloyd's Bank in town? Uh, Lloyd's Bank? Yes. Now, it's... Well, if you go straight across the first crossroads when coming out of the bus station, you'll eventually get to a junction with 2nd Avenue. And I think Lloyd's is on the corner there, opposite a small hairdresser's. OK, I think I can remember all those directions. Thank you ever so much. You've been very kind. Not at all. I hope you find all the places OK. Listening activity number 10. Look carefully at the street plan below. Follow the sets of directions and then answer the questions at the end of each set of directions. 1. You've just come out of the bus station. Turn right and walk to the junction of Elm Avenue and Hanover Road. Turn left and walk up Hanover Road. Cross Woodlawn Lane and continue up Hanover Road. You will see a big building on your right. What is the building on your left? 2. You've just come out of the bus station. Turn right and walk to the junction of Elm Avenue and Hanover Road. Turn left and walk up Hanover Road. Pass the Bank of Asia on your left and a small park just opposite. Cross Woodlawn Lane. Keep straight on until you see the zebra crossing. Turn right. Walk along Street Lane to the end of this road. What is the building on your right? 3. You've just come out of the bus station. Turn left. Walk straight on. Take the first turning on the right. Go along the street lane. Take the second turning on the left. What is the building on your right? Listening activity number 11. Now look at the map of Mapletown. Find the station at the bottom left-hand corner first. We will start here. 1. Mr Smith has just come out of the station and is asking the driver the way. Excuse me, could you tell me where the bookshop is? When you leave the station, turn left, then cross Station Road at the junction and walk up North Street. Take the first turning on the right and the bookshop is the first building on the right. Thank you. 2. Miss Acton has just come out of the station and is asking the driver where a coffee bar is. Excuse me, could you tell me where the coffee bar is? Go straight along Station Road, past the zebra crossing until you reach a crossroads with Market Street. The coffee bar is facing you on the right corner. Thank you very much. 3. Miss Abby has just come out of the station and wants to do some shopping. Excuse me, can you tell me where the nearest chemist is? A chemist's? Oh yes, there's one on West Street. When you leave the station, turn left and go along North Street until you get to some traffic lights. Take the right turning there and walk straight on until just before a left-hand turning called South Street. The chemist is on the left, on the corner of these two streets. Thank you very much. 4. Mr. Robert Smith wants to find a hotel. Excuse me, could you tell me where I can find a hotel? A hotel? Yes, there is one on the corner of West Street and Market Street, next to the bookshop. The corner of West Street and Market Street, next to the bookshop, is that right? Yes, that's right. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye and have a nice day. 5. Mary and Jack want to visit the art museum. They don't know where it is. Excuse me, could you tell us where the art museum is? Yes, it's on Market Street, opposite the hotel. Thank you very much. That's OK.
Listening activity number 12. Look at the map below. You will hear six separate sets of directions to a certain place on the street plan. As you listen, follow the directions carefully, then write the appropriate letters beside the names of the places below. The first one starts at the car park. Find the car park, please. Conversation 1. Excuse me, could you tell me how to get to the post office from here? The post office? Let me think for a minute. The post office, ah uh, yes, it's on Victoria Road. Go straight along High Street until you get to the park. Turn right at this junction into Church Road and then take the second turning on your left. That's Victoria Road. The post office is in the middle of the block on your left, opposite the church. Conversation 2 Excuse me, I'm trying to find the bank. Do you know where it is? The bank? Let me see now. We are on Lake Street, so you go down this road until you come to Victoria Road. Turn left, and the bank is on your right. It takes up the whole block between Lake Street and Church Road. You can't miss it. Conversation 3 Excuse me, please. Could you tell me how to get to the Windsor Hotel? Yes. I think it's on Oxford Road. When you come out of the church, turn left and walk to the junction with Church Road, where you turn right. Go up Church Road, past the coffee shop on your left, and the Windsor Hotel is on your right, just past the coffee shop. Conversation 4 Excuse me, I'm trying to find a Chinese restaurant. Do you know where it is? A Chinese restaurant? Yes, there's one on High Street. When you come out of the church, go straight up Church Road until you reach High Street. Turn left, and it's the second building on your right. I see. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Conversation 5 Excuse me, could you tell me if there's a news agent somewhere around here? Uh, yeah. Now then, if you, when you come out of the park, you go straight on Church Road, you'll come to a crossroads. Turn right here, and there's a newsagent on your right, at the end of that road, on the corner of Lake Street. Thanks a lot. Conversation 6 Excuse me, I'm looking for a grocer's shop. Is there one nearby? Yeah. So, just walk along Victoria Road. You will see a coffee shop on your left, and turn left at the junction and into Church Road. Carry on down this road, past another crossroads, you will see a building on the right. Past the building on your right, the grocer's shop is standing at the corner of Church Road and High Street, opposite the park. At the corner of Church Road and High Street, opposite the park. That's great, thanks a lot. Listening activity number 13. You are going to listen to a conversation between Janet and her friend. Janet is telling her friend about her holiday. As you listen, write down brief notes in the box below about her holiday. Hello Janet, I'm glad to see you back. Did you have a nice holiday? Yes, it wasn't bad. What did you do? Tell me all about it. All right, if you're really that interested. We arrived at our hotel at five o'clock on Saturday afternoon and didn't really do anything much until the next morning when my father hired a small family car and we all went to Safari Park, which is not far from London. It was a very interesting park, full of lovely wild animals. We motored through the monkey's compound first and that was an experience. They climbed all over our car and we had a wonderful view of the monkeys. Then we continued into the lion's compartment and we had to lock ourselves in because the lions could come very close. Yeah, it must have been terrifying. Did they come to you? Oh no. We saw them sleeping under trees, quite far away from us. We were unlucky and didn't see them clearly. Anyway, we had a good time there. Oh, it sounds interesting. It's the kind of park I like. On Monday we all went off to Oxford and spent a whole day there. On the way to Oxford we stopped at Stonehenge. Stonehenge? It reminds me of my own experience when I was a student at Oxford. Oh yeah. 
I thought it would be rather a romantic thing to do a, a drive off in the early hours of the morning and watch the sun rise behind the stone. So? That was a good idea. Did you do it? Yes. I went there with some of my classmates. When we got there, it was still dark. It was very cold and wet. We stayed in the car and waited for the sun to come up. Well, did you see it? No. When it began to get a little bit light, we couldn't see anything at all because there was so much fog around. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. But it was a beautiful day when we got there. We took lots of photographs there. You were lucky. Well, did you do any sightseeing in London? Yes. The next two days we stayed in London. On Tuesday we joined a sightseeing tour run by London Regional Transport, an excellent introduction to all London's principal sites. We visited Trafalgar Square, Westminster Abbey, the Houses of Parliament, and about 11.30 we were at Buckingham Palace and saw the changing of the guard there. Yes, the changing of the guard always takes place at 11.30 at Buckingham Palace from May to July every day. During winter, it's on alternate days. We also went to Tower Bridge and the Tower of London. Anyway, we were pretty tired so we went to bed very early. The next day we went to Greenwich by boat from Westminster Pier. Oh, it sounds wonderful. A unique way of seeing some of London's most famous landmarks is to take a trip on one of the passenger boats which follows the River Thames through the heart of London. Yes, that's my favourite part of a holiday. Just relaxing. And the day after that, we went shopping for presents and souvenirs. I brought some really lovely things back. You should see some of them. And then in the evening, we went to the cinema and saw a really great film. What was it? It was called Star Wars. It was really exciting. You'll have to go and see it. Oh yes, I've heard it's good. I should go. Well, I'm thinking of going to London for my next holiday, actually. Oh, you should. And then the last day, Friday, Unfortunately, it rained all day, so we stayed in the hotel. But we had quite a good time playing table tennis. Then the next morning, we got up pretty early and left the hotel at 10 to give us plenty of time to get back. Yeah, it's a long journey. You must have been tired. Yes, we were. But then we had Sunday to recover before I started work again. <laughs>